Hello guys, welcome to my channel. I am Tom and in this video, you will learn how to make simple real-time hair inside a blender using hair to add-on just like the one you are seeing right now. I will try to make this tutorial as simple as possible, so fear not, but I'm expecting you to know the basic navigation inside a blender. So if you don't, I will recommend you to go to the blender beginner tutorial on the internet and you should be good to go. Now, hair tool is a paid add-on. However, I do believe it is definitely worth its cost and I think you're gonna love it. This add-on was created by awesome developer named Bartos Steperek. I'm sorry for butchering the name, but this tool has everything you need to create hair and it is just awesome. It can make the process of hair creation really enjoyable and much simpler so you can just focus on being creative rather than thinking about technical stuff. If I had to pick one add-on for character creation, that would be this for sure. So I can honestly recommend you getting it if you are a character artist. So how do you use hair to add-on to generate the hair cards? We have simple mesh that has been shaped to look like the basic hair shape. Like this one. This add-on has a functionality to generate the hair cards from the board face geometry, which has one end being marked as a uh, chop. Like that. And this add-on see this chop as a root of the hair. So whenever I want to generate the hair, this add-on will generate hair from here to here. So just like that. Like this. And like this. So what we can do to generate the hair from this mesh is to select the mesh, press Control shift h bring up this pop-up menu and then you just need to press this one now we have a very nice looking hair and then in addition to that we have a lots of settings you can change to change the look of the hair there are a bunch of settings here but i'm on only going to cover settings that you will mostly like to use and very useful okay so here you can increase or decrease the number of the hair hair strand you're going to have you can go lower, you can go higher like that and then point per strand this is basically a subdivision of the hair higher you go, it's going to be more high poly and the hair strand will become much smoother like that but I would like to keep it as low as possible and next up random spacing it will just change the space in the hair like that next one noise amplitude this will just add a noise to the hair so hair will become a bit more messy but makes it look interesting you know if you increase this you can make it go crazy <laughs> but yeah i would like to keep it around 0 0.06 like that and next one is the snap amount if we increase the scale, now you can see the hair is being snapped onto the mesh, the grid. So by increasing the scale to 1, you can make sure the hair is being placed at exactly where you want it to be. And the final one is the hair width. It is very simple. If you decrease this, you can make the hair strand much smaller, thinner. And if you go up, you can make the hair strand much wider. And that's pretty much setting only you need to know for this tutorial. Um, yeah, if you want to edit the shape like manually, then you can just go ahead and go to edit mode, select the point, enable the proportional editing, and start changing shape. You know, you can do that very quite quickly and easily. Like that. But one problem you would notice is that there are so many points that I can't even see what's going on. And then, you know, if I want to select one point and I wrongly correct, you know, select the wrong point, then it gets frustrating very quite quickly. And developer of this tool actually knew this problem and then implemented a new tool for this add-on, which you can find here. Hair tool modeling. What this tool allows you to do is to tweak the shape of the hair without going into the edit mode. And you can do all the things inside the object mode, which means you don't have to deal with all this mess ever again. Right now, only the tip of the heads are highlighted. So if I just press G and move it, I can tweak the shape however I want. And now you notice that even though I'm just selecting and moving the tip of the hair, everything as follows. That is because of the feature that the hair tool has, which is this one. 
but if you don't like it and you want to do things in a way you would do in edit mode you can just go up here change it to normal mode now you can tweak the shape using the proportional editing so it is a very good feature okay now if you want to select only specific part of the hair for example like these areas what you can do is just press shift and right mouse button to select them individually or you can just press ctrl and left mouse button to use the lasso select and you can start moving things around oops like chain mode and you can start moving things around like that the one thing you should know is that this add-on uses its own hotkeys so if you don't know how to do things you just need to go up here click this and you see everything you need to know so make sure to go this if you don't know how to do things okay now let's say i want to edit this part of the hair so how do you do that it's very simple i just need to press ctrl and use my mouse wheel to scroll up to the point where i want to edit my hair maybe this area and then use my lasso select select this point this around I want to area two, so that. See, it is very easy to use. And now let's say I want to twist my hair and go make it go crazy. So I'm gonna like this chain mode, select everything, and press R and Z, and make it go crazy. <laughs> yeah you can do crazy stuff with this too so yeah that's pretty much all the basic functionality and how to use tool so yeah if you know this you should be able to follow the tutorials so yeah have fun oops sorry guys i forgot to mention you something which is how to change hair color this is very simple so if you want to do that you just need to go to shading tab on tree so you just need to go to this one click this icon just by changing this slider you can change your hair color so maybe i can go for like a bluish color i can change the specular which is this kind of refraction yeah and i can also change the metallic color maybe let's do some stupid pink check this out we have changed the hair color very easily now we know how to do this let's move on to the actual part of the tutorial okay let's open up the blender have yourself a character or head that you need to put some hair on in this tutorial i'm going to be using this head that i made quickly the other day and also i'm going to be using preset hair template and texture that come with the add-on as a base and modifying it to get a hairstyle i want so press n to open up the tab and click on the hair tool go to the library and this is where you can access hair presets however in order to do so you first need to unzip the hair tool file to get the hair texture file and hair preset file these ones are presets this one for the textures this is important so make sure to have both of these now go back to the blender hair tool tab you need to locate to the file where you unzipped your hair preset file select that you now have access to the hair preset you can use there are many templates you can play around with but for this tutorial i'm going to pick this long hair template and click on append now you can see new two object in your scene this is a hair grid and this is a hair The hair looks good but we don't need this one so go ahead and delete this now you are left with this hair grid that we are going to generate hair card from so now i'm just going to position this hair grid to match my character's head by scaling up and moving things around you can do this in front view and side view to make this process easier make sure hair grid is right above the surface of the head and not like grid going through the head here, I go into the edit mode and tweak in the shape.
then by enabling proportional editing and checking the connected only option you can edit only the area you want to edit without moving other parts of the mesh accidentally here i am making sure no mesh is intersecting each other This hairstyle is a bit too long for my liking, so I am just deleting some of the faces of hair grid to make it shorter. Now it is looking more like a hairstyle I'm going for, so I'm just keep continue editing the shape. Here, I noticed that there were edges that shouldn't have been marked as sharp, so I just selected those edges and pressed Ctrl E and clear sharp. Now, my hairline is looking kind of mess, so I'm just going to pull some of the vertices more towards forehead to establish straight and defined hairline. To check the look of the hair, press Ctrl Shift H to bring out the pop up and press curve from grid. The gap between the hairline is too wide, so I'm going to delete the hair mesh and fix that. And also pull back hairline more towards backward as well. Here, make sure the root of the hair is slightly inside the head and to add the volume to your hair, just bring up the edge that is next to the root. And I'm just checking the look of the hair again by generating the hair cards. And you can see it is looking much better. But still, it needs some adjusting. Here, I am editing the grid around the ear so the hair doesn't cover up the ears completely. Moving on to the other sides of the ear, you will notice that there is no gap around the ear. So to make that, select some vertices around the ear and press B to split the edge.
Okay, the hair grid is looking quite messy right now, so to make everything smooth, select all vertices, go to vertex menu and select smooth vertices. Now it is looking nice. Here, I'm generating the hair to check the look of the hair. You can see, I'm constantly repeating this process to get the result I want. And also, go ahead and mess around with a bunch of hair settings to get the desired look of the hair. If you lost this setting after generating the hair, you can get it back by selecting the hair cards, pressing Ctrl Shift H, and select Generate Curves from Grid again. If your hair is looking very thin and not covering up the head very well, just like mine, then don't worry, we can fix this when we assign UVs to the hair later. Here, I just open up the settings and change the snapping amount to the 1 to snap my hair cards to my hair grid. And remove the noise completely. and increase the number of haircuts a bit as well. Now it is time to assign UVs to your hair. So to do that, go to the UV editor and type hair into the search bar and you should see the image named hair strip 3. Select that and click on the hair UV button on the top right corner. We are going to be drawing the UV box for each of the hair texture like what you just saw. And those boxes will act as own UV set for each hair texture with different hair density. The way we are going to make realistic hair is create around 3 or 4 layers of hair with different hair texture and laying them on top of each other to make the hair look much nicer and interesting to look at. So once you are done drawing the UV boxes for the texture, you can assign and change the UV for the hair whenever you want easily.
And next step is to press Ctrl Shift H to bring up the pop-up and select on the Assign UV. Now you should see something like this. You might have noticed that when you are drawing the boxes, each box had its own number assigned to it like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. So if you press the button, you can assign UV to the hair that you assigned the number to. For this layer, we want it to have very thick hair texture to cover up the sculpt. So I'm going to click on these two zeros by pressing shift. Now you have successfully assigned the UV to the hair and your hair might be looking something like this. And here's one tip. Whenever you forgot which number you assign your texture to, you can just click on the hair UV again and you can find that out. Now I want the hairline to be tighter so I'm going into the edit mode, go to the select option and select root and then fill in the gap by pressing Alt S. And after that, I tried to fix the hairline a bit in the edit mode. You can edit the tilt of the hair by pressing Ctrl T. This was a very tedious process and took me some time. At this moment, I started using the hair modeling tool since it is much easier to use. Now let's move this side of the hair over the ear. Select some vertices with lasso select by pressing Ctrl and left click. And switch the hair modeling mode to the chain and start pulling the hair to the back. And again, if you are not sure about the hotkeys, you can always go to the top and learn about the hotkeys. Here, I'm switching the hair modeling tool to the normal mode to edit the hair with proportional editing. It will make the process easier, but if the hair is acting weird when you're editing the shape, what I do is just select the vertices I want to edit with the lasso select and go into the edit mode and tweak the shape there.
here, I noticed that from the side view, the scope is visible, so I'm just going to pull some hair down to cover this up. Now I'm editing the hair around the ear and making sure the hair isn't covering up the ear completely. As you can see, this part of the hair isn't sitting on the face naturally, so I'm going to fix that by using hair modeling tool, chain link mode. Okay, once you finish editing the first layer of the hair, we name this layer uh, layer 0. So that you won't get confused as you start making more layers later. Once you have done that, Select the hair grid and generate the new layer of the hair, and then click on an instance. This is basically to make sure that this hair gets its own hair setting properties. And this is mostly important if you start using more advanced hair settings, and we might not need to do this for this project, but it is good habit to do this process nonetheless. After this, you can go to the hair settings and decrease the amount of hair slightly and add some noise to the hair. We are going to be using this layer to break up the repetitive look of the base layer by assigning slightly less dense hair texture, which is UV set 1. So go ahead and assign that to your hair.
Now, go to the object mode and to make our life easier, click on the tiny triangle mark beside the random or toggle buttons. Change the viewport mode to the random. This will assign colors to each object in your scene and help you see if there's any overlap of each hair layers. What you need to do now is to bring hair layer 1 over hair layer 0 and try your best to avoid overlap of the hair as much as possible. Okay, let's check out the look of the hair. And you can clearly see the difference the new layer 1 makes. To make it look even better, I'm going to taper hair by clicking on the taper curve in the hair tool pop-up menu. Once you have done that, we are going to pull the hair around the ear to the back just like we did before. Thank you. 
and after this process, we are going to have something like this. And it is time to rename your mesh and start making the new hair layer again. So select the hair grid to generate a new hair layer and don't forget to press uninstance the profile. This time, we want to have a fewer haircuts than the hair layer 1. Also, add some noise to your hair as well. Then assign the UVs to the hair just like before, but this time we are going to add two less dense hair texture and mix them into one layer. So we are going to select 4 and 5 by pressing shift and clicking on those four buttons. Next, we are doing the exact same thing as we did with other hair layers, which are to bring hair layer 2 over layer 1 and try not to have an overlap of the hair layers as much as possible. Make sure to check your hair in material preview mode often and if you find any issue, you can fix that. And once you have finished tweaking the hair, you can go ahead and rename your mesh layer 2. 
and we are going to move on to create the final layer of the hair, which is going to be a hair layer 3. This layer is usually called a flyaway layer, and it will add some levels of flow to your hair. So select the hair grid, generate the hair, and instance the profile, and lower the numbers of hair cuts significantly, as you don't need a lot for this layer. Then assign the UVs by selecting 2 and 3. And now I'm pretty sure at this point you know exactly what to do because it is the same process as you did with other hair layers. Once you are done, check the look of the hair. And finally, taper the hair. And voila! Treat yourself with a nice cup of tea because you have just made real-time hair on your own. I didn't take much time to make this hair, so the result is looking okay. But if you take more time, you can make it look way better. And more and more hair you make, it gets easier for you to make your own hair. So just try to make a bunch of hairstyle and have fun with it. But anyways, thanks so much for watching and I hope you learned something. Until next time, see you later.